Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You're not expecting me to sing, are you? <laughs> well, we're glad to be here tonight. Thank you so much, Pastor, for allowing us to be, to be here today. We're so blessed to be with loving and caring people, especially in these global trying moments. You know, amidst the turmoil uh, that is so confusing and confounding, it is always a blessing to have someone on your side to make you feel comfortable and secure. You know, God's presence in us enables us to be a blessing to one another. If you don't mind, shall we all please stand as we give honor in reading the Word of God tonight. And uh, we're going to read Psalms 93, verses 1 to 5. There are only five verses in the book of Psalms, chapter number 93, and we're going to read all the verses. And if you don't mind, follow me reading with your eyes, and then we'll come to the Lord in prayer tonight. Psalms 93, verse 1 says, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Where we had given himself, the world also established that it cannot be moved. Verse 2, Thy throne is established of all. The art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have lifted up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness become at thine house, O Lord, forever. God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much, dear Lord, for allowing us to gather together tonight. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for the traveling mercy you have given us today. Thank you for all the blessings that we receive. And thank you for your presence. I'm asking you to please anoint my lips and touch our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Shall we all please be seated? Amen. Uh, I am your missionary to the Philippines and to Asia, Brother Ramil of Frisio. Uh, many of my friends are having a hard time uh, saying my, my last name, but it is pronounced as Ofrisio. And I came to know the Lord when I was just in my fourth grade. I was uh, invited by my science teacher to a Bible study in their home when I got saved. I was just a young boy. As a lost young boy, I was vulnerable, innocent, and helpless. But for sure, I was not hopeless. Amen. God's words came into my life that turns my life upside down. At first, I was I wasn't really interested to be in that Bible study. I just want to show up to my teacher to get a better grade. But God showed himself to me instead, and he gave me a better life. Amen. When a pastor preaches about uh, the birth, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, I started to walk on the aisle with tears in my eyes and accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And everything else followed. I came here exactly 24 years ago. I was just 24 years old. I believe this was the very, the first 10 churches that I've been through during that time. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your trust. During the time, I don't even know what I was doing. I'm naive, uh, novice. I don't even know what I'm going to do in the mission field. But thank you so much for your trust and for your prayers. Because of that, we were able to start 20 churches in the last 20 years, and we still keep growing by the grace of God. Amen. The day that God gave me the best source of what I really need in this life, that, that, that was the day that I know that I could make it. Knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ is on my side. Yes. What's happening right now is no longer, I would say, it's not a strange thing to us. It has been uh, taught in the Bible, written in the Word of God. If these things are happening right now, it, is, it was because it was written in the words of God. You may want to ask how it is, how it was in the Philippines about COVID thing. I, I would like to tell you that we have the longest lockdown in Asia. When it was started in 2020, I, I came home a week uh, before our lockdown in the Philippines. We were not allowed to go to church for over a year. The authorities are coming and visiting us, checking on us if we have services, 
If we do, I could easily go to jail because it has been a national law that no one, no one, nobody was allowed to worship the Lord Jesus Christ during that time. You know, that's the first time that we ever have that kind of experience. 99% of my people, of our people in the Philippines, were laid off from their job. It's in every day I am receiving texts, calls, messages on my Facebook, praying and asking for help because they can just go outside. They can, they can even go to the ocean and fish. They can even go to the farm and, and, and raise or, or, or plant some food for them. It was so difficult. It was so hard. But you know what? I thank the Lord and my God. That up to this day, none of our church members ever died of COVID. I and my wife, we were infected last July. I thought, Pastor, I was gonna, I'm was i going to die. We were in a separate rooms. We can't, uh, I, I can't even look at her because I can't even walk. We want to go to the hospital, but for sure, they can't do anything about it. And it's been filled up. We were just je- there kneeling and praying and asking God. We are having a hard time breathing. I know I was going to die. But I praise the Lord and my God that He showed me. I, I even questioned God. You know, when you are deprived of oxygen, you will be disoriented. I was asking God, what have I done to suffer as such? And I am asking Him to give me more time to live so that I could go on in the ministry. I praise the Lord that He listened to my prayer. Amen. And we are here today because of that purpose. And that is to carry on, to preach on, and to reach as many Filipinos as we can. Amen. You know, when we got saved, there are three else that we receive from God. Number one, we receive the best life ever. Knowing that when we die, we're going for sure in heaven. That's right. Amen. And we're going to stay there not just one day, Amen. not just one year, but we're going to be with the Lord forever. Amen. Praise God. John 1 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Hmm. The Philippines is a pagan country. 90% of our people are Catholics, worshiping idols, knowing and believing that when we do serve our idols, that will eventually lead us to our salvation. But I praise the Lord in my God that He sent out a missionary in our place and have the heart for lost souls. And I was, be, I was able to hear the Word of God and He gave me that life. That I don't even deserve. Mm -hmm. Number two, he gave us a light. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. That's the reason why our authorities, our world leaders, they doesn't know how to deal with this COVID thing. There are a lot of theories going on around us. And blinding our community, our people about this COVID thing. But the reality is, these are just of the few signs of the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are no longer counting days nor years. And He will come anytime, any moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. He gave us life, light, and most of all, He showered us. With his love. Yes. John 1 12 says. But as many as received him. To them gave he power. To become the sons of God. Even to them that believe. On his name. Romans 5 8. But God commended his love. Towards us. In that while we were yet sinners. Christ. Died for us. Amen. What a, what a love that God. Had given us. We don't deserve that kind of love. He knew exactly that I'm going to sin. He knew exactly that I'm going to commit not just one sin. But multitudes. A lot of sins. He knew exactly that when I asked him to forgive me. 
He is going to forgive me. And after that forgiveness, I'll go back and sin again. But because of his love, he, that, he, he just not just covered our sins, but he redeemed us Amen. by his blood. These three important gifts from God are powerful enough for us to subdue all the trials in life. May I remind us, everyone, that there is nothing that we cannot win if we live for God. Mm, yes. This COVID thing, it is not the boss. That's right. It's not, COVID is not in control. Mm. COVID is here to stay until God says so. Right. That's right. We know for sure that He has a plan Amen. and a purpose for this. You can have all the vaccine all you want. But if it is your time, it will be your time. Mm -hmm. That's true. The source is God Himself. He is the best protection. He is our ultimate and absolute protection. No more, no less. Amen. You know, do you know that in the Philippines, if you're not wearing masks, you could actually go to jail for 30 days. <laughs> it's a national law, Pastor. It's hard. You can't ride a public utility vehicle if you're, if you're not fully vaccinated. You can't buy anything, any groceries if you don't have vaccine. It's getting harder. Pandemic for many is a difficulty. But do you know that it is also an opportunity for us to be more assertive of what we believe? Amen. The sacrifice, John 3, 17 says, For God sent not His Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. I believe that this pandemic, during this time, God had able to receive most numbers of requests for them to live and have a life and healing. But before pandemic, we've seen people, how they took for granted the life that God had given us. Not just the general public, but a lot of Christians as well. They were thinking that there is that God is not coming soon and God is going to delay His coming. But you know what? God is going to come. And that is our blessed hope. Amen. And I'm excited. Are you excited? Amen. Are we ready? We must be ready. And you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only sacrifice acceptable. You know, there are different kinds of vaccine out there claiming that it can give you the ultimate protection. First, they want us to have the first shot. And then the second shot. And then the third shot. What else do we need in the future? All what we need is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One shot. That's right. <laughs> Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Only acceptable sacrifice. You know that sacrifice, it overturns the judgment. Romans 8.1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. <coughs> That is the message that this world needs to know. When they lock us down, I ask um, all of our men and some church leaders for, for them to help me reach out to our people. We conduct home worship services. I'm handling five that whole Sunday and one worship lasts for an hour or two. We're handling over 50 or more on Sunday. But we take that opportunity to lead as many people as we can. Yeah. Prior to pandemic, we're having about 150, 200 maximum. Our church can only accommodate 150 pastors, Filipino size. <laughs> <laughs> 
a year after, God sent more soul. 300, 400, 500 on Sundays. Mm. Where we're obligated to uh, create two more services just to practice social distancing. You know, when you are, uh, when you reiterate, when you are assertive of the word of God and the power of God in you. When you preach the word of God, it has its own power to the person you are talking to. Amen. And can overturn the judgment. And it was the overall sacrifice intended for everybody. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God, soul of the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. <laughs> we should never stop telling, proclaiming this story. We have a great story to tell Amen. to the nations. While all worldly stories are self and human-centered, our story, this ministry story, your story is much different for it has to be God-centered. Yes. You know, when this COVID thing started, it's, it demoralizes a lot of uh, religious sector. It collapses a lot of government. A uh, few days ago, we were hit in the Philippines. We were hit. Uh, a, a powerful typhoon in the south, southern part of the Philippines, Pastor, and it flattened everything. But prior to that storm, our government is already bankrupt. We have been borrowing billions of dollars to China. And you know, China, they are claiming our islands in the South China Sea. We can only fish one kilometer or one mile away from our shore. It's really hard. Fishing and farming is the main industry in the Philippines. If China will take our waters, it will be difficult for the Philippines. We thought that when the China is doing that, that is the hardest thing that is going to happen to the Philippines. And then COVID came. And then storms. And volcanoes are now erupting in central Luzon. You know, when the floods have lifted up, and when the floods will lift up their voice, and will lift up their waves, let us not forget that the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Amen. He is mightier than the waves of many sea. Because the testimonies of God are always sure. Yes. And it make it sure that this house, is wor his house of worship, becometh his house. Mm -hmm. And he will be the Lord. And he's always the Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the Philippines, I preached just 15 minutes and four hours. I'm not going to do it tonight. I will only <laughs> preach for five minutes and three hours. Will that be all right tonight? <laughs> you know, God wants to see in you that God reigns in your life. You know what this world wants us to have? This world wants us to have that kind of fear. A fear that will take us, the, take away our faith from God. Let us be reminded that there is nothing to fear about. Amen. If the world is going to collapse, then so be it. If we're going to die with COVID, then so be it. There's nothing to fear because death is the beginning of our life. Amen. Let us not forget that our God is now building our mansion in heaven. Yeah. On our way here, our GPS uh, brought us on another road, Pastor. I always come to a uh, cemented and what's it called? That, uh, asphalted. asphalted road. But our GPS somehow brought us to a one-way narrow <laughs> and, uh, you know, gravel, gravel road. <laughs> My wife says, uh, 
Where are we going? <laughs> this is not the way. <laughs> and I know that they are frightened and they're afraid. I started to tell a story about Jeepers Creepers, <laughs> about the movie Wrong Turn. <laughs> And uh, our GPS says, in one mile, turn right to Cemetery Road. <laughs> and that frightened them more. <laughs> you know what? When, Lord, when the Lord is reigning in your life, you're going to have that confidence. You're going to have that kind of boldness that no matter what is going around you, there will always peace in your life. Amen. Amen. As if nothing is happening. Whew. You know, there are three days that God wants us to have all the time. You know, my desire is, my, is for my people to be safe. I have four biological children, three boys and a girl. And the girl is the boss. <laughs> Actually, there are two bosses in our house right now. <laughs> I should not forget her or I'll be in trouble. <laughs> God listens to our individual desire. As an individual, there are things that keeps us moving forward. And these are desires, our dreams, and directions. Psalm 38 verse 9 says, Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. Psalm 21 verse 2, thou hast given him his heart's desire, and has not withholden the request of his lips. When I came here, Pastor, 24 years ago, I have only simple desire, and that is to be used by God. I don't even know the details of it. I just go along as the days goes by. But I praise the Lord that He showed me that just He showed me His great power in fulfilling that spiritual desire that I have. And at the same time, He put some dreams in my life. When our desires compound, we develop dreams, dreams that ignite our life to move forward and climb an even higher mountain. Last June, we are now averaging over 500 attendance on Sunday. The reason why we're back, not only to report, but I want to tell you that I am more inspired than ever. My son, brilliant, you remember him. He came and visited you when he was uh, uh, traveling. He's now uh, taking over while I'm gone. And during, they're doing a good job in the Philippines. Winning hundreds of souls each and every day. Our Bible school students are going out every day. That is our main task. To win souls. God is leading us to build a bigger sanctuary. We are dreaming of pastor to build a 2,000 seating capacity. Yes. God still listens. God can still fulfill the dreams. Even though we know for sure that we're already in the last days, that should not stop us of dreaming and serving God. Amen. Believing things about to happen. And with that, God is giving us the best direction in life. And the Lord reigns, must reign over our family. One of the best gifts that I've given us is our family. They're important to us. My family is my inspiration. But there are three P's that are important about our family. Number one is provision, protection, and we want them to have the best position in life. That's why we help them to go to school, finish their college, for us to be a model, a parent, for, so that they could be able to position themselves well, like we do. Psalms 23 verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, it's hard to travel all across the United States. I've been doing this for 20 years, for several times. But when you are traveling with your family, it's different when you're traveling alone. 
Number one, it's it's more expensive. <laughs> yeah. It's more expensive. It's more scary. Like tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. But I praise the Lord and my God that there was never a day that God did never, that God did not provide for us. Amen. He always led us to his will. You know, one of our challenges while in the United States is for us to have a place to stay in between services. Because when we go to a church, the church or the pastor will only put us in a hotel for a day or two. But we're, go we're going to live the rest of the time. We should have at least one place to go to. And when, I, when we came, our, our mission board is just a small uh, office pastor. And they're not taking any, any percentage on our support. But with that, they cannot provide us well for our, our housing. Because they're doing everything for free. And when we come here, we're, we're on our own. But a family out of nowhere, we don't even know them. They don't even know us. Somehow, a friend earmarked the needs that we have. And he allowed us to use their basement. And it is the most beautiful place I've ever seen in the last 24 years. Because it was provided with love. Amen. That's how God provides for his people. Protection. You know, you are blessed here in America. Because we Filipinos, we don't live very long. Yeah, that's for sure, Pastor. My mom and dad, they died in the early 60s. Diabetes, hypertension. Uh, our health system in the Philippines, you know, though you have insurance, you don't have, you don't have good doctors, you don't have good medicine. You cannot get good health, health care like what you have here in the United States. And I've seen people, a lot, I have a lot of friends in their 90s. Driving 90 miles an hour. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, as a foreigner, it's hard to drive in the United States. But thanks, thank God for GPS. <laughs> Praise the Lord for technology. But we need God's protection. Amen. In all of my travels, Pastor, there is only one time I was stopped by a policeman, by a police officer. Not off speeding. It's because I drive too slow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that you cannot drive below 40 miles an hour in the, in the interstate. <laughs> I was sore of praying, but I thank God. I have covered thousands of miles already in the United States. The least miles I could cover in one trip is 25,000 miles. Never had a single accident. I hope there never, there never will be. God is always behind me, helping me Amen. on the steering wheel. And we need power. This is the best time for us. To use the biblical power that we have learned over the years. We have to use those verses, those preachings, those messages that we heard from our dear pastors and guest speakers. We must be powerful than ever. Ephesians chapter 10 verse 18. We're going to stop now. 10, 18, but I want to read these verses for us. Finally, my brethren, Ephesians 10, 18. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. How? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness, of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins geared about with truth. And having on the breastplate of, plate of 
of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always without prayer and supplication in the spirit. The Lord reigns over yourself. The Lord reign, must reign over your family. The Lord reigns. The Lord must reign over the church. Amen. Yes, there is a separation between the church and the state. I do know that you do practice that here in the United States. But the church must be powerful than ever. The church must possess a vision, retain its value, and the church must have a vantage. A vantage is the best position for you to see the blessings of God in the future. Yeah. Our, my goal, my desire on this trip is to raise a hundred churches that can help us a one-time offering of a thousand dollars. So when we sat down, the pastor told me, we are getting, we're going to give you a thousand dollars tonight. <laughs> God already knew. He even prepared it prior to our arrival. Amen. God is all-knowing. And then the pastor came back. Brother Emil, where do you want me to put the name on your check? And I asked him, are you going to give me another check? He said, yes. Thank you, pastor, for another $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> <That was good. laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your support. Your prayer alone is good enough for us to carry on. Let us continue to rally. Let us continue to work together. This is the highest time for us to work together hand in hand. Amen. Help us to build that 2,000 seating capacity. And I will tell you, I promise you, that we're going to win souls, as many souls as we can. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Good evening. Amen. Amen.